Hi there, this is Jessica Hagman at Alden Library, and today I'm on the second floor in the Academic Achievement Center, um, which is now on the second floor of Alden Library. It used to be on the first floor. Um, and in just a moment, I'm going to turn you around so you can see Dr. Tamika Scott, who is the director. Is that the title? Is it? Assistant Dean. Assistant Dean. I'm sorry. My apologies. Assistant Dean. And is um, leads the this whole operation, of which there are a lot of parts you might not be aware because there's a lot of things happening here. Um, so we'll get a little tour of their area and hopefully some more information about um, what happens here and how you might want to take advantage of those. Let me turn you around. Okay. Dr. Scott, Assistant Dean Scott, if you could kind of tell us where we are now and like what's um, what happens in this area of the AAC. So this is part of the AAC. We consider this to be our cap um, club or hub or lounge, whatever you want to call it. But it's here for our CAP students who are our TRIO student support service students. Um, and it's approximately 275 students in this area. And they use this space for um, just to, to hang out, as well as study groups, study tables. And then right here, we actually have where our CAP free printing is at. Um, so this is the space that they use for that. And so they, you said they come here to do like studying and things like at these these tables here, like study tables. Study tables. Sometimes they just come to talk to the preventer, particularly where the preventers will be, or actually to get some work done on the computers. Okay. Um, take advantage of the free um, printing services, or they just come and just hang out in the space. So I'm like, really great. Um, and you said that people who are in CAP are already like identified for the most part. They would have been told about that when right, they registered right. so as such. So we typically do an incoming process for incoming students, where we're looking at students who are first. Year or students who have been identified with disability services. And those students are the students that we recruit to, and then we do a selection process through there to, get, to maintain our 275 participants. Okay. And you have peer mentors, too, who work. Are they, like, former, not former, but they're also CAP students? Or are they? also CAP students okay. who are more than likely a junior or senior okay. here at the institution and have academically been successful and navigated the system, too. Okay. And you said they spent some time here to really talk to those students? <laughs> yes. and so they spend their time here doing some of the study, and they also host their own study table. Um, times here as well, and then we encourage students to actually come into this space and they just have some like a study buddy or someone to have some conversation with about how things are going on campus, mm -hmm. questions answered. It's sort of the one one stop shop. You can come here and have great conversations as well as do some study. Awesome. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna maybe move over here a little bit. Can you tell me what other kind of things happen here aside from the CAP program? Yes. Yeah, so outside of the CAP program, we also offer our university um, college courses. So we have our 1100 course, which is our learning. learning strategies course. We also have time management and we have college study skills writing. I'm sorry, college study skills reading and study skills. And that's hosted in these two classrooms over here okay. in space. In addition to that, we have our writing we saw our um, their sort of hub office is right there as well. But they usually do their meetings out on this other part of the second floor, right? Yes. And so in this space right here, we have a group studying. This is where we do some of our, um, our coaching. So we have college study skills coaching in our area as well. Mm -hmm. We partner with the Allen Center to actually do some intentional outreach to students. Um, and so the coaches actually will have their appointments in there mm -hmm. with their students um, and have some just intentional conversations around it. But most of our tutoring and our coaching happens on the other side. Okay. So this is like the hub that happens kind of all over this floor, wherever there's room? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, this is where you come to start the process. Okay. I'm going to turn around and show people the desk. There will usually be a super friendly student. So you can't see them right now, but there is a student sitting here who will, um, if you're not sure where to go or to meet your tutor, you can stop here and they will help you with that. Um, one thing I, that I didn't know when we were talking earlier was about the study skills coaching that's available to everyone. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so our study skills coaching is available to all undergrad students. And it's really just an opportunity to meet with a coach, whether it's a grad student or professional staff, to um, sort of bounce some questions off of, as well as to provide some intentional ways to study to either improve your grade or to make your grade more high or to improve your grade in the sense. Um, so if you're stuck with some people, I'm sorry, with like time management, they can provide you with some strategies to manage your time a little bit more effectively and efficient. If it's something as it relates to just really um, understanding the best way to study for something, so you those tests taking uh, skills that are needed, they can help you navigate that process as well. And sometimes it's just about a conversation of what it means to be a college student and 
how do you manage um, from one phase always receiving A's in class to now you're struggling a little bit, sort of balancing mm -hmm. the um, transition from high school to college, um, mm -hmm. sort of happens in those those college study skills. <laughs> Is that a newer thing that's been um, happening? That's something that the Academic Achievement Center has been doing for a very long time. The partnership that we have with the Allen Center is what's new. Okay. And our intentional outreach to the rest of the campus community regarding coaching is something that is new. So it, okay. although it's something we've always done in this space, we're being more intentional with sharing it with other um, entities on campus. Okay. So we're trying to build those collaborative networks to get catch people who need the help. Okay. Um, and could you, so we also heard from Tiffany who talked about um, tutoring, kind of more general tutoring. Could you give us a quick, like, how does that work for students who need help with classes? Yes, so typically what happens is either a faculty, a staff, um, so an advisor, someone will tell a student you should go to the AAC for tutoring. Mm -hmm. And a student will come in and they'll say, I need help with um, a class. And if we already offer the class, then it's just a matter of connecting them with tutor to track, and then they can register and sign up for the class themselves. If it's a class that we don't offer, then we refer the student directly to the to then go out and find um, either a tutor or find a resource for that student in order to be successful. So tutoring can happen in a variety of ways. We have a set of classes that we typically offer just based off of what has been um, sort of the culture of the university where we've seen students struggling in. And then we also have classes that may not have been on our radar and then students will come in for us and then we'll go and do some research to find out if it's a class that we should be offering. Okay. Um, and then so supplemental instruction was for specific classes like chemistry and math? Yes. As for anyone in those classes? Yes. So supplemental instruction is a little bit different than our tutoring in the sense of um, Amanda is looking directly at classes that have the high DWF rate to them. And so those are the classes that then they build supplemental instruction to support. So it's not, you can not be doing well in one class, but if it's not one of those that we have seen based off the research to show that it is a high level DWF course, then that might not be a class that we offer. Um, so, and with supplement instruction, is also in a group setting, whereas peer tutoring is typically not online. Okay. Um, and then for supplement instruction, it's pretty much, it helps you throughout the semester. So it's different to come to peer tutoring, and it might be one time. Supplement instruction, you're going to go across the academic semester. Um, receiving information to help you understand and digest the information that you're receiving in the classroom. So it literally, I mean, its name is literally supplemental instruction. It's meant to be almost like another class for people who want or need the yes. help with those really hard classes. More intentional conversation, more group work, um, more reflection to understand the material so that you can apply the material in order to be successful in that course. So just hearing everyone talk about the work that you do here, and I hear you saying the word intentional a lot. It's really clear how much work goes into planning and, and making these services available. So thank you, of course, for doing that. Um, is there anything else we should know about the AAC before we sign off? Um, if we could just go around. Sure, so yeah, that would be great. Space. Yeah, that would be awesome. Have, have all the tables up. Oh, right, because they're doing construction right now, yes. but that's okay. But I do want to turn around quick and show what this looks like for people who are coming in. So if you come in second floor, so over there is like the library help desk, and then I'm going to turn around and show you what this looks like. So if you, um, there's a sign that is almost always there, I think. <laughs> Thank you. And then, so this is, uh, you can't really see like the extent of what's here, which is what's so hard. Uh, but this whole area, it's the endless struggle of buildings like this, right? Um, and so this is a, this is a mean, uh, tell me what happens here during the day. This right here is where they will do coaching and have other meetings okay. within the AAC okay. the space. And then after five, if a student or student group wants to use the space, they can reserve the space the same way they would reserve any other classroom space sure. okay. in the library. And we always tell students that if this is empty and we're not using it, come to our front desk and mm -hmm. ask can you use the space and we'll let you use it. That's a nice size room. Yeah. yeah very nice. We did some um, photos of the tutors in there <laughs> last yeah, semester. Yeah, yeah. Those turned out pretty well for tutoring week. Really nice. Okay, so we are heading um, back through the second floor. There's the elevators to my left. Um, some leftover whiteboards from the summer, <laughs> the semester. I love the whiteboards in here. Um, and so we have some nice new carpet. You can't smell it, but it smells like new carpet. Um, and during the semester, this area is just filled with people mm -hmm. doing all sorts of tutoring. Yes. So this is literally where, so from this side over here, 
through this side. This is where you're going to get your peer tutoring as well as your math and science tutoring. Um, the sign for it says writing zone. Beyond that point, you'll have tables and chairs very similar to this, but that is where the writing center does their tutoring. Okay. I get, I've gotten questions about that sometimes. People are, they're trying to find their, their tutor. Yeah. So writing center is behind the writing center zone, so the tables behind there. So I can that zoom in a bit. That's where you're looking for the writing center. And then the rest of this would be peer tutoring and the math and science center. Okay. And it goes from this as well as this open space that's over here. So it's quite large. Just it's hard to tell because it's not easily yeah. designated. Yeah. Which is pretty much how everything goes here. <laughs> um, but there are restrooms back here. If you haven't been on the second floor for a while, you should know that there are a whole new set of men's and women's restroom and a single user restroom, um, which makes the second floor much more pleasant. And also, it's just nice to have those. Completely agree. Yes. Oh, and the lockers are best. There's still some lockers back here. So. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, is there anything else do you think we should know before we sign off? Um, no, besides the fact that we are we're, we're revamping now that we're on the second floor and we have very exciting um, staff that is looking forward to helping students be successful in their journey here. All right, thanks so much for going live with us, and Thank I'm you. looking forward to sharing more of what you do in the future. All right, let me end this.